So uh, my name is uh, Jonas Lanz. I'm uh, working at the University Hospital in Bern, uh, Switzerland, uh, as an interventional cardiologist. Uh, we're going to talk about the three results of the SCOPE-1 trial, a trial that compares uh, accurate neo self-expanding transcatheter aortic heart valve to the Sapien-3 uh, balloon expandable uh, tablet device. Well, seminal trials uh, comparing transcatheter aortic valve implantation to surgical aortic valve replacement have established TAVI as a standard therapy for the treatment of severe aortic uh, stenosis across the surgical risk spectrum. And these trials and these landmark trials, different generations of two distinct TAVI platforms, the balloon expandable Sapien and the self expanding core valve and Evolute platforms have been used for TAVI. So additional devices later on with uh, different properties have become available, but evidence from randomized trials to benchmark these uh, newer platforms against the ones established in the landmark trials are scarce. And in order to address this uh, gap in knowledge, we performed a scope trial. We included 739 patients with severe symptomatic aortic stenosis and random, randomly assigned them either to the accurate new device or the Sapien 3 device. So in the light of the very scarce data, available especially for the accurate NEO to date, even from observational data with regard to its long-term performance and durability, and the fact that its successor device to NEO2 is currently being investigated in an IDE trial, the long-term outcomes of the SCOPE-1 trial are of uh, particular interest. Both of the two devices have a uh, C-mark, and they are actually in clinical use in Europe uh, since six to seven years. Uh, the comparative device, the Sapien-3, is a worldwide widely used uh, transcutter heart valve, uh, whose performance has been very well established in partner 2S3 registry, and also, of course, in the partner 3 low-risk trial. So even though it's implantation mode, the one of the Sapien-3, uh, which is implanted by means of balloon expansion of the, of the stent uh, frame, differs diametrically from the self-expanding top-down uh, implantation mode of the Acronio. The two devices uh, share some similar features, namely, ease of coronary access and suitability for horizontally angulated scanning aortas, and hence the target population for the two devices have uh, some uh, overlap. At 30 days, TAVI with NEO failed to meet pre-specified criteria for uh, non-inferiority compared to the Sapien 3 device regarding a primary composite efficacy and safety endpoint, and that was due to higher rates of moderate parallel, parallel regurgitation and acute kidney injury. Considering that meta-analysis and also several sub-analysis of randomized trials and registries have shown an increased risk of death and rehospitalization associated with the presence of moderate or severe PVR after TAVI, one could hypothesize that the shortcomings observed at 30 days may translate into worse clinical long-term outcomes um, in the long run. However, this was not the case as we observed in the three-year analysis. A three-year follow-up, 24.3% of patients in the acronym and 25% of patients in the Sapien 3 group had died, and rates of all-cause death, stroke, or heart failure rehospitalization for um, the two groups uh, were similar at three years. Likewise, there was no statistically significant differences in acquired bioprosthetic valve dysfunction or valve failure, uh, which were actually rare in both groups. There was a numerically higher number of valve thrombosis in the Sapien 3 group, six versus one, but that was a statistically not significant. The favorable hemodynamic profile of the supranal acrineal appeared preserved over three year follow up with lower uh, mean gradients and higher effective orifice areas. Well, I think the fact that the uh, scope to one trial. In the scope one trial, there was now no sign that the early differences in device performance actually translated into differences in durability or clinical outcomes at three years. This is very reassuring for uh, patients who received the accurate new valve and also for the IDE trial country enrolling patients to compare the successor device, the new two, uh, to patients treated with uh, other commercially available tally platforms in the US. But nevertheless, one should keep in mind some limitations. First, the study was performed or conducted in an elderly type population at intermediate uh, surgical risk. So applicability of findings uh, to low risk patients with a longer life expectancy uh, may be limited. And furthermore, it has to be considered that overall 11 accurate patients um, underwent multiple valve implantations at the time of the index procedure or uh, underwent a re-intervention in the course of follow-up 
due to parallel regurgitation. So careful patient selection should continue and take into account adequate uh, device oversizing and also the degree and pattern of calcification uh, of the landing zone. The successor device, as mentioned uh, before, of the acroneo is the NEO2. It comprises a higher outer ceiling skirt to reduce parallel, parallel regurgitation, so one of the shortcomings uh, we saw in scope. Uh, as mentioned, there is a large ID trial running now that compares the NEO2 to, NEO to commercially available uh, TAVI platforms in more than 1,000 600 patients, so a really uh, big trial. And this will certainly generate a large body of evidence on the comparative performance of the device. And those are the most suitable patient population. Regarding the SAPEN platform, vast data is already available, but future research will certainly keep an eye on the long-term impact of hemodynamic properties associated with its intraannular um, position, particularly with respect to the risk of valve thrombosis and durability in low-risk patients.